How was KFC made? I'm sure just about everyone watching this video is aware of KFC. In fact, it wouldn't be a stretch to bet that some of you might be enjoying a meal as you watch this. You're probably also aware what it stands for, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and who founded it, the iconic Colonel Sanders. But chances are, you don't know the whole story of how that delicious fried chicken in your hand actually ended up there. So, in this video, that's what you'll find out. So, stick around to see exactly how KFC was made. Colonel Sanders, the story of KFC dates all the way back to the years of the Great Depression in the United States. And we can't recount that story without talking about its author. Colonel Harlan David Sanders, born in September 1890 in Indiana, USA, came from a humble background and was faced with numerous challenges in his early life. After his father's untimely death, young Harlan had to take on more responsibility to help support his family. He learned to cook at a young age to help his mother. Sanders initially struggled to find his place in an American workforce, often switching jobs and suffering from an unstable career path. He worked as everything from a farmhand and streetcar conductor to a fireman and insurance salesman. That all changed, however, when Sanders made his foray into the food industry. His first venture was a small service station in Corbin, Kentucky, which doubled as a humble diner where he served meals to travelers passing through. Sanders' main offering was, a, of course, a deceptively simple yet delicious dish of fried chicken, which Sanders meticulously developed using a secret blend of 11 herbs and spices that coated the chicken before frying. The original recipe for the secret blend remains a closely regarded secret to this day, with only a few individuals in the company being entrusted with that knowledge. His unique recipe was the cornerstone of his success, and his fried chicken was an immediate hit. It quickly gained traction among the locals and travelers who started to go out of their way to visit Sanders' roadside restaurant for his ch fried chicken. In 1936, however, a new interstate was built that bypassed his restaurant and drove traffic away from its location, causing a significant decline in customers and putting Sanders in the midst of some troubling times. But the solution he came up with to solve this problem started a chain of events that ultimately led by KFC being what it is today. Origins of KFC and expansions you see undeterred. By the difficulties being faced by his restaurant, Sanders decided on the idea of selling a secret fried chicken recipe to other restaurant owners. He figured that by sharing his recipe and method, he could build a network of restaurants that all serve the same delicious quality chicken to the masses. And so, he began visiting potential franchises personally. He demonstrated to them how to prepare the chicken with his recipe and shared the techniques and practices he used to ensure quality. He made sure to be particular about maintaining consistent quality across all the outlets insisting on using fresh ingredients and following the recipe to the letter. This franchising model that Sanders adopted proved to be a huge success as the taste and quality of his chicken was simply unmatched and it was now reaching more people than it ever could from that small diner in Corbin. In 1936, Harlan Sanders was given the honorary title of Colonel by the Governor of Kentucky, Robbie Lafoon. In recognition of Sanders, Sanders contributions to the state's cuisine and his philanthropic work. That's right, a common misconception about Sanders is that he had previously served in the military, but his rank was actually an honorary one. It was a tradition in Kentucky to grant the title of colonel to individuals who were seen as notable figures or who had made significant contributions to the state. 
which Sanders definitely had. By the early 1950s, Sanders had hundreds of KFC franchises across the United States. In 1964, he sold the Kentucky Fried Chicken Corporation for $2 million to a partnership of Kentucky businessmen. Then in 1966, KFC went public and was listed on the New York Stock Exchange. In the late 1960s, KFC made its first international foray, opening outlets in countries like Canada, England, and Japan. The franchise model would prove its success time and time again, even on a global scale, and KFC continued to establish its presence in various countries over the next few decades. In 1991, PepsiCo Corporation acquired KFC, making it a part of the larger Young brands, which also included Taco Bell and Pizza Hut. Since then, KFC has expanded its horizons non-stop, becoming one of the largest and most recognizable fast food chains globally. Branding and marketing, the success of KFC perhaps cannot be attributed only to the delicious taste of the chicken. Another huge reason was Sanders' genius marketing. He recognized the importance of brand consistency and knew that the public needed an icon to associate KFC with. He decided to become that icon by adopting the person of Colonel Sanders, using his honorary title to his advantage. This gave rise to the famous image you all can probably see in your heads right now, of the grinning man in his distinctive white suit, string tie, goatee, and red apron. This became an integral part of KFC's marketing and was the key to establishing its early brand identity. Other than that, KFC also became known for its creative and engaging marketing campaigns over the years. The most iconic one of these, which you have probably already thought of, is of course Finger Licking Good, which dates all the way back to the early days of the 1950s. It emphasizes the deliciousness and KFC's fried chicken and has become ingrained in popular culture to this day. There were also many other notable campaigns over the years which gained popularity with the public. We do chicken right in the 1980s emphasized KFC's commitment to quality and taste. It portrayed KFC as a trusted brand that excels in preparing chicken. Everybody needs a little KFC. In the 1990s was another one that targeted a wide audience, emphasizing that KFC was a place for everyone to enjoy a delicious meal. Later marketing campaigns reintroduced Colonel Sanders as an important character in KFC's advertising, casting various popular celebrities to portray him, such as the Colonel's Way in the 2000s and Return of the Colonel in 2010s. This brought new attention to him and the brand identity created. All these campaigns are the reason KFC as a brand is still recognized and popular so many decades after it started. They found great combinations of humor, creativity, and a focus on KFC's quality to engage and resonate with the public. Evolution and KFC today. During the 2000s, KFC continued to rapidly expand its footprint across the globe. It had just recently gained success in the Chinese market, which uh, set the stage for expansion in Asia. Its presence grew in countries like India, Pakistan, and more. It focused on adapting its menus to the local tastes and preferences of the countries it was in. The 2000s is also when KFC took steps to diversify its menu by offering a wider variety of options. This included items like wraps and salads alongside the usual fried chicken and burgers to cater to the more healthier conscious customers. Later, in response to growing demand for healthier options, KFC introduced Kentucky Grilled Chicken, a lower-fat alternative to the traditional fried chicken. This move was part of 
KFC's efforts to offer more balanced choices to its customers. KFC also introduced the Snacker sandwiches, which were smaller, more portable versions of their chicken sandwiches, in an attempt to cater to customers looking for a quick and convenient to snack option. It also introduced boneless chicken options to its menu, providing an alternative to traditional bone and chicken pieces. This move aimed to cater to customers who preferred easier to eat options. It was around this time when KFC began implementing activities to address environmental concerns, such as efforts to reduce packaging waste and conserve energy in its operations. The 2010s came with a large digital transformation for KFC, introducing online ordering systems, mobile apps, and loyalty programs. Ordering KFC at your doorstep became easier and more convenient than ever before and with better customer service than ever before. During the pandemic, like many other businesses, KFC implemented various safety measures in response to growing sanitary concerns. This included enhanced cleaning protocols, contactless ordering and delivery options, and support for franchises. Today, KFC is still a giant in the fast food market and the original recipe from all those years ago remains in use. In Colonel Sanders' original diner in Corbin, that has since been renovated and restored and is now open as the Sanders Cafe and Museum on the High Bay 25th. It looks exactly how it looked in the 1940s and features many exhibits of the Colonel's artifacts and memorabilia from those precious early days of KFC. Visitors can also tour the office of Colonel Sanders and see the kitchen where he formulated the secret KFC recipe as they enjoy their meals. So, there you go, the story of how a fast food empire came to be. Colonel Sanders passed away on December 16, 1980, but his legacy lives on through the worldwide success of KFC, which remains one of the most iconic and recognizable fast food chains in the world. Hope you learned something, and thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can never miss our video.